Whether it's Luke Cornett's contests, the Jays defining the ideal modern-day wing players and taking it a step further, or the Celtics' advanced, constantly flowing offensive system orchestrated by Joe Mozula, the Boston Celtics have changed the game. Before going in depth on all of that and more, which I promise you can't miss, just 9.4% of you watching are subscribed, so subscribe if you haven't already, leave a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and make sure you're up to date with the channel by following at Hoops on Instagram and Twitter. Thanks so much for your support. Luke Cornett may not be the quickest guy in terms of his lateral or overall movement. It's tough to move around at 7'2", 250, but he's made up for that by creating a defensive tactic where, as you can see, instead of taking the time to fully rotate out to the perimeter, he hacks the system by using his 9 foot 6 inch standing reach to block the rim from the shooter's vision, not by going out to contest their shot up close and personal, but by merely putting his arms up in the air to block the shooter from locking in on the target. It's a very unusual type of play, but it's also a brilliant tactic. Considering it's been working a lot as of late, I wouldn't be surprised if this type of contest from Cornet starts to be seen more often. It may look awkward, but hey, if it works, I'm all for this tactic becoming a normality. What makes Cornet's contests so damn unique is that he not only gets in the player's head by cutting off their target of the basket, but I think it's genuinely a tough shot for players to hit because it's something they're not used to. In the summer and throughout the season, of course players get reps in with trainers flying out at them to contest, but I can guarantee you very few players, if any, have gone through the training regimen where a trainer's timing their jump around the hoop and blocking off the paint. Let's give some credit to Cornette for filling in for Robert Williams. Playing 12.7 minutes per game, Luke may only be averaging 4.8 points per game, but where he's filling in for the Time Lord the most has come on the defensive end, where he's posting a team's second most 1.1 blocks per night. Moving on to Jalen Brown, who had 27 against Miami, but a game before sitting out the second night of a back-to-back -back against Charlotte, JB just picked apart the Washington Wizards defense with 36 points, a timely personal season high, with Tatum sitting out. We'll get to a breakdown of that game, but Jason's attempting 4.9 catch and shoot threes so far, and making a solid 35.1% of them, spot up shooting consistency which forces defensive scouting reports to press up at will. But Brown's improved scoring wherewithal and maturing IQ make him well aware that given he's been hot from deep range, opposing coaches are going to scout that and try to stop it. After Jalen got his first points of the game against Washington on a downhill drive, that attack, paired with the aforementioned opposing game planning keyed in on shutting down his open spot up triples, Kispert assumes Jalen's going to mix it up by this time shooting a three, so Corey exposes his top foot, Brown gets a quick first step after attacking that position, Kispert does a decent job recovering, yet the strength and dexterity from Brown allow him to get around Kispert for the bucket. On that play, notice how to get a clear lane, Brown fakes a push ahead dribble with a very slight rip through as he catches it, a nifty fake which gets Corey off balance. This up fake and drive into his jab step again gets Kispert thinking Jalen's about to let his first triple of the night fly. Instead, the Celtics 1A scoring option gets his third consecutive dominant take to begin the evening as he grabs his own missed layup for the putback. No Wizard puts a body on Jalen in transition right here. Kispert's even posing for the camera as he lightly trots back and ultimately ends up receiving the Kodak moment he was after when Brown flies down the lane for the poster. Even when Jordan Goodwin does pick him up, at this point, Jalen's drawn so much attention that he can either go to Hauser or Brogdon, choosing the latter for a Malcolm splashdown. Smooth gravity drawing and wherewithal from an ever-improving playmaker in Jalen, Brown's done a great job all year of making the proper reads in Mozula's hammer action, generally off-ball motion-heavy system. Same thing goes for Jason Tatum, whose 49-piece against Miami came on 8-for-12 three-point shooting and a true shooting clip of 80.9%. This game saw Tatum become the first player in NBA history to secure multiple games of having 45-plus points, 10-plus rebounds, and 8-plus three-pointers made. With Miami starting the game in a 2-3 zone, simply one Tatum swing pass out of this double team gets all five Heat defenders to leave him alone. Max Struess is just standing there. That's a poorly executed zone own, but also great decision making from Tatum to not only pass out of the double, but stride directly to the basket with no one guarding him. Credit the recently extended Big Al for the well-executed drive and dump off. Great hand-eye coordination by Jason to catch the short bullet pass and throw it down strong. The elusive footwork as he catches this pass from Jalen on the wing gets out of bio thinking drive and get Tatum the space he needs to rise up with his balanced jumper and innovatively effective high arcing release. 
Since Bam was baited by Tatum's footwork on the catch, he's forced to make an out of control closeout and he gives Jason the four point play. This time he catches a pass from Jalen on the opposite wing and given Martin's instinctively waiting for Jason to utilize that same track runner starting point-esque footwork like the last time he caught it and let it fly, Tatum just regularly catches it and shoots it right away and Caleb gives him all the space in the world to do so. It's those little intangibles in terms of the knowingness to predict what Martin's expecting which make it look like a video game for Jason Tatum. Again, we see that elusive footwork to fake the drive as he catches it, as without Jimmy Butler, no Heat defender could force Tatum into his second attack early on. With all due respect to Udonis Haslam, to put the veteran in a situation where he was on an island with Jason Tatum was straight bullying by Eric Spolstra, as JT goes around him like he's a trainer and one two steps around Struess as well for the easy bucket. And straight bullying was what the three-time All-Star, two-time All-NBA player, and ECF MVP was doing all night against the undermanned Heat. The Brogdon penetration and bounce pass kickout leads Jason nicely into his drive. Caleb Martin partially deflects the pass, but Tatum swiftly collects it and goes hezzy dribble, double between the legs Jordan-esque cross, normal cross right, back between the legs left, and all that gets Martin sagging way too far off. Tatum just stops on a dime for a one-two step pull up. Nasty stuff. Of course, many people give Jason flack for setting the record for total turnovers in a single playoffs last year. To be fair, that was when he was working in a completely different offensive system under a different head coach. However, in 22-23 so far, Tatum's averaging the third fewest turnovers of his career and .6 less giveaways each outing than he did last year. In Joe Mozula's offense, Tatum's working off the ball a lot more, and you see him down low in the post and setting screens like you would have never seen him do under Udoka in 2022's playoffs. Before the win against Miami, Tatum's field goal percentage in the painted area was higher than Giannis's. Tatum's shooting over 56% in the clutch, and he's the best player on the best team in the league by far right now. After handling Miami, the Celtics are now 14-1 in their last 15 games, which is fueled by their all-time greatest game-changing high-octane offense, consisting of lethal floor spacing. In Sam Hauser, Al Horford, Malcolm Brogdon, Derek White, and Grant Williams, the Celtics have five players shooting at least 45% from three-point range. They have six players shooting at least 40 plus percent from distance if you include Peyton Pritchard. That's not even mentioning what Marcus Smart and the Jays do for you shooting wise. Who deserves more respect on the Celtics and why? Two shoutouts from my last video's question and this one in my next upload. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.